So then before we continue, who here has a Wikidata account? One, two, three, okay. The next slide will be a bit boring for you because the next slide we're going to continue, we're going to create a, a Wikidata, Wikidata account. Oh no, I, first I should say, who am I? So I'm Andra Wagmeister, I'm a bioinformatician by the way. <laughs> And I have been working with Wikidata since So, and I'm showing you a tool called Scolia, which is a rendering, which is a, a, a interface on top of Wikidata, which anyone can use to. Um, be, also, uh, I see everybody's on the on their laptop, so the QR code doesn't work. Do you want me to share the links in Slack? Maybe that's so you can follow along. Uh, not yet, but I will share it shortly, yeah, maybe during the break. So Scolia is a tool that takes in, um, a, uh, that, uh, that takes in um, a Wikidata item and then renders it on an interface. But uh, if you would go to the same Wikidata item which it renders, you'll see something like this. And this is just the item on me. And it has a lot of statements. I will go over the atomic, the atomic structure of Wikidata in a short. We're really doing a deep dive now. I'm throwing you in the swimming pool to learn how to swim. And you can see that there are some statements in there that, that, is, that is what is known about me and on Wikidata. Scolia takes that and makes some more uh, human readable inter, uh, rendering of it. We have the list of publications. There is the number of publications per year. So it actually selects all the um, items from Wikidata, but also the incoming and outcoming arcs from other items and visualize uh, this. And we'll dive more into Scolia uh, later. But uh, it also um, has some co-citations, co-author graph uh, that, it, that it extracts from Wikidata. There is the co-author map and other locations and uh, etc. So there is a lot. It, it extracts all the. It, it extracts information from Wikidata, and it renders it on this. Now, now that you have seen this, who wants to have the same page? So to do that. Um, we're going to the uh, Scolia, Scolia page for bio-curation. It looks a bit like this. Share it, in the, share it in the link as well. And here we see the same, we see the, f the, the facet on Scolia for event. So we have the current event you're attending. It's part of the series of the International Biocreation Conference, and if again, if we go to the Wikidata item, you see that it, it's, it takes this Wikidata items and it, it ventures out in all the links that it can find in Wikidata, which is then rendered into um, into the, the the page for the conference. So here you can see um, this is the co-author graph of people involved in the event. And, and, and there is a timeline, there is topic scores. Oh, that's great, Wikidata is the second. Uh, let's see how, how, how that shows at the end of the, of the, of the time. Uh, what participants' software tools they use. 
uh, recent publications by participants of the event, etc., etc., and take your time to, to scroll through it. Um, so now we have to, I have the first task of this workshop. Add yourselves, and this is, this is of course, you, you, this is only voluntary. I'm, I'm, not ask, I'm not asking you to add yourself, but if you, what we're trying to do is we're going to add, uh, uh, we're going to try to add you as a participant to the event. So by adding yourself to the event as a participant, going a bit back, to where were the participants? Um, we have to go to the, uh, and there is a link, participant, and you see I'm the only one now who is participating in the, in the event. Yeah. Uh, ah, great. <laughs> so the first task is let, let's add everyone in this room to this page as an, um, as an exercise. So what do we do to do that? Um, first, for those of you who don't have a Wikidata account, you need to create a Wikidata account. One remark there, it is not necessary to have an account to, have an account to add to Wikidata. But in that case, uh, the IP address of your location will be the user ID. So choosing a, 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 your own account has benefits. I choose to put my own name out there, but it's common practice in the wiki, wiki world to just have an alias. And that's all up to you. So to start to create an account, yes? Did you slack that link also, or did it not yet? Not yet, I'm going to do that now. So to get your account, there is one caveat there, and so we might, we might be a bit creative here. There is a spam masher in place that if uh, from a single IP address there can be only make a certain number of new accounts. And Tiago, do you know the number? I thought it was seven. What is the, so the, the, for a single IP address you can only get a certain number of new accounts. So if that's the case, we, I'm, so tell me if you can't, if you can't make an account, don't try uh, uh, again and again because it won't work. And then we might need to find a different. So what I, what I usually do in that case is I just make my phone a hotspot and, and, and make the account from there, or I start the account from my um, from my phone. He is, so if, um, if you go to the, let's, let's go with my page. So there is a link here. Oh, they recently, where is it here now? There is a link, well, what's, what links here? And these are all the pages, these are all Wikidata items that are being, at, that, that link to, to this page. So probably you have the same. And I suspect that uh, it's, uh, it's all the publications. Yes, right. So with, this is something we'll touch on later, is where you can add publications. And there are different ways to add publications. And then the author, um, so in the, the basic step is where your name is being added as an author string. But once you have a Wikidata item, there are processes running in the back 
that will align your new Wikidata item with, uh, with that paper. And then that's when you see the Scolia pages is increasing. And, So once you have um, so once you have made your account, go to at, at participant by going this page. Scroll down to participant. and add yourself by add value. The caveat, you can only add yourself once you have a Wikidata item. Yeah, and let's go there. And so if you click on any property, <coughs> so you were saying the GitHub, right? So the GitHub username in itself are items in Wikidata 2. So if I click on the GitHub username, I get all the, I get a set of statements in there, but you also see the URL match pattern. So you can only add things in there. It's so maybe also a good time to dive in because I just realized I didn't touch on this in, um, in my slides. Um, the, um, the Wikidata is an item. If you look at, let's, we were at the property, the GitHub username, it says external identifier, which is a type of value, which means it's a string. But if we would go to instance of, we'll see that the, um, the Wikidata item is an item. So similar to, to, the, to the RDF world, um, there are uh, URIs and, and literals, except that the URIs uh, and uh, the, the, there is a subdivision in that. So within Wikidata, you have two types of URIs. You have the item, which we see here, which means that it's a URI within Wikidata. And then we have the next uh, data type, which I think is a bit of an unfortunate name choice, which is called URL. But that actually is a URI. So that's the other. And then for the strings, there are a dozen different times. You have the, the, the basic string, but you also have the date. You have the GPS location, which is coordinate. And there, there are a set of uh, types you can use for the value. One thing that is really helpful to add as well when, while you're making your page is to add to the, the set of identifiers. Because the more identifiers you have, um, and I can highly recommend to add your, at least your ORCID ID, because that can be really helpful in, in reconciliation of papers uh, later on. So like, like here, I, this is my Wikidata item. And um, where is ORCID? So it's the GitHub username and ORCID, ORCID ID. 
It is not necessary because it will happen on its own. To be fair, you can actually see there is a little add-on that I added, which doesn't come from Wikidata when you when you log in as it is. It's, I, I added a little extension that puts in who added it. So you can see that I have added my own ORCID ID, but the Microsoft Academic ID has been put on by another Wikidata user. Uh, the Mastodon address has been added by someone else. So you can actually see there are, once your page is there, other users or bots, which I will dive in later to, will start adding identifiers. No, there is no constraints. The users and machines have the same. Uh, there is the other way around. So once you're editing, adding, but this is not on the property level, but it's recommended to work with, uh, no, it's actually a requirement to work with what's called a bot account. So at the end of the workshop, I will, I will address that a bit. A bot account. A bot account is a software agent that, that, that edits Wikidata items. That doesn't mean to say that uh, you cannot write a script and add to Wikidata without a bot account. It's actually when you start out, you have to do some uh, edits without a, without a bot account, but which is part of the bot proposal. But when you go at scale, you need to have a bot flag. Uh, but this is more about scale and less about which properties to add and count. So who is still, everybody has a Wikidata account and a Wikidata item? We are working on it. Sorry? We are working on it. Okay, then. Go on. So let's say I'm in an ontology page. In an ontology page, it says something like cast edition or translation. I, uh, if I'm in my page, could I make a statement like, Nico has edition or translation. Yes. Okay. So there's no way to kind of see. So what, what I'm asking, because let's say I want to, let's say I want to make this perfect ontology uh, page. I want to improve the model page, for example. But I'm like, which properties should I be using to describe this page? I don't know like, where to get the good information from. So what would be the, what would be your recommendation to find out, like what are the stuff? What are the things that we should re record about ourselves, for example? You would say, look at my page, it's great, you should do it like that, but there's no kind of form that says these are the recommendations. Yes, there is, um, there is the entity schema extension to Wikidata, which I will address later, where you can, uh, uh, where you can state what you're expecting on an ontology. But this, again, is user input. So you can go in and say, according to me, Nico, I think an obo ontology should look should at least have the following properties. That's one thing. There is also another extension into to uh, into the wiki data, and that is if you go up, that is called Recoin. And what Recoin does is that you can actually see that um, for the type human, these are the properties that uh, often. Uh, uh, are there as well. And this will also show when, once you have a new profile and you set add statement. So let's go to add statement. It will say date of, oh, thank you. Five, five ID and date of that are, so it, it gives suggestions on what to add. But these are just based on other properties being used of that type. No, no, no. I, this is not something we're going, we're, I'm going to address today, but um, we can take that off, or, or if we want to, we can dive into that, but that's extensions. You can do a lot of extensions that, that go on top of that. Um, 
Yes, but may I table, because I have a complete session on this. We're going actively going to explore the, so the, the difference is, uh, the short answer, not, not to like, and I don't want to have you hanging, is the, the CC zero, so there is not the, 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 the number, but it's CC, the Wikidata uses a CC zero license, which is public, which means, but that's the version for CC zero. Yeah, and then you have CC by, and there is where the 4.0 comes from. And that's a more restrictive license to, that's what, for example, Wikipedia uses. The CC by 4.0, which means that, um, so for CC zero in Wikidata, you can use without any problem. You don't have to do uh, any attribution. If you want to use content from Wikipedia, it's required by the license that you use a CC by, uh, you need to use attribution. But, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to this because this is very important in when we start aligning oboe ontologies. Uh, so it's worth an, a, a discussion. So for, let's wait a bit more on, um, on the creation of pages. But for those of you who are alre who already have an, um, who are already ready, I am r um, sharing this tool, which is the author disambiguation. Disambiguator, and what this does is it, um, you type in your name and it will find um, all the papers that others have added with your name as a name, as a string. And what you can do now is you can actually uh, change those uh, towards um, your just created new page. And that way, the string uh, becomes an URI or a link in Wikidata, and you can actually leverage all the information that's in Wikidata. Ah. Ah. Oh, okay. Ah, but you need to. I guess it. It is. It will. So you need to authorize. And then you need to authorize with your Wikidata account, which I'm now, I'm going too fast, sorry. So I clicked on uh, authorize, I log in with my Wikidata account. And now we can try again. Demonstration issue. Okay, let's so allow. Okay, what seems to have worked for me is uh, going back and forth with the authentication page. That's a good question. I will take care of it. I will make a short bitly in short share wiki data minus slack. Just give me two seconds. Okay. So let's check again.
Another neat trick which I will share is if you add next to the QID a hash and then the, the property for participant, which is P17, it will immediately point to the, to the list of participants that have been added. Can you just uh, show the link that I posted from the Wikipedia yeah, architecture so that the new ones? So it's just bit.ly by iteration minus 2023 minus snap. Is readable? So now that you have, we have added the uh, updated uh, participants, we'll see that the the co-citation, the co-author graph extended and the more uh, the event grows, the more publications that have been put, the link will, will uh, uh, the, the, the co-citation graph, the co-author graph will extend and hopefully at the end of the event we're all connected. So is this event only recorded or are we live? Is it recorded or live? It's recorded, okay. So I don't have to ask questions. There are no questions that I'm missing. Okay. And, uh, can I ask you to show the link again? Because I think it's like to... Oh, sorry. Sorry, the question for the audience? No, 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 I needed this. Ah, sorry. Please. Thank you very much. So who here, can we continue or does anyone need help with creating an account? Who doesn't have an, a Wikidata account yet? Anyone here who doesn't have an item yet that wants it? So as a teaser, uh, you will see that some of the participants have their picture uh, already on, on it. That will be task two, is to make sure the image gets there. Uh, sorry? I don't hear you, sorry. <laughs> That's task two. This is the teaser. So uh, bear with me. Okay, now that we have worked, a bit of background, so you can sit back and, um, and enjoy the show. So, Wikidata started out in 2012 as the linked data repository, or maybe I, I will wait a few minutes. Yeah. Sorry? No, no, Andrew Sue utilized it. So, so I, I'm me neither. I'm not involved officially if, or affiliated with the Wikidata organization. 
which is hosted by and maintained, I think it was started by Wikimedia Germany, but I think it's now officially part of the Wikimedia Foundation. That's a good point. A very good point, actually. So Chris just, um, uh, Charlie just mentioned that uh, it is possible someone made a page about you. Because um, in Wikidata, we're talking about uh, authoritative data. So once you have publication, your co-authors could make an item on Wikidata. So um, that's a good exercise, good point. Please check your name and tell me if there are more than one item on that name. Yeah, so we're just situation here with Catherine. We took a, we took a look at the first I think it, it, it's not super clear the difference of the user name and the I mean maybe there's some some others. When you create an account you have a username and a user page, but that doesn't mean a nice and about you or change about you can be created in the in maybe data because they're two different things. Yeah. Which is exactly why I asked to put in the ORCID ID, because then, then it's a bit less ambiguous. And no problem. But may, may I ask to work with the mic? Yeah. With the mic. So I have. I made an ID. So I need to make a page and add my ORCID in there. Is that yes. correct? Be okay. Okay. And what do I add it under? Because I was looking to see, is there an identifier that says ORCID ID or? Yes. Okay. Wait a minute for the microphone. So, so, so the purpose of Wikidata is, of course, data. So more than the person, I guess, which data resources that we contribute to. So within the page, I should just edit and add a few things. Like within my page, I should add connections to the resources that I contribute to. Yes, Will that help? I mean, I'm just trying to understand like the eco ecosystem of what kind of content Wikidata makes it makes Wikidata better. So I, I can't, what I what I did so far is I threw you in the deep, and what I'm now going through is a little presentation on this. But indeed, uh, the next step is this is just an X. But usually, what we did is today by adding yourself mm -hmm. is not common practice within Wikidata. Okay. So the idea is really Wikidata is not a primary data source. So if there is no information which, which aligns a bit with what Tiago just said, if the, you should not put your primary research data onto Wikidata. So let's say you find something, you have a finding that should not go to Wikidata first. So first, it, it, it only goes to Wikidata once, it is, once it's become notable. And with notable, it means so Wikipedia introduced this notability is you cannot create a Wikipedia item uh, on anything. Actually, what we did today with Wikidata is a big no-no 
on okay, Wikipedia. Right. Okay. You're not allowed to create a uh, Wikipedia article about yourself. It will be deleted immediately. This is not the case uh, with uh, Wikidata. And as long as it's not an orphan item, if I may call it like that. So once you're an author of a paper, or you are uh, contributing to a database, or you have, and you're mentioned in another database, then it's perfectly fine to create your own Wikidata item. Again, this is a big no-go on Wikipedia. Yeah. So, so I th Wikipedia started in the early 2000s, uh, and, and I think already in 2005 uh, it gained the same level of accuracy as Encyclopedia Britannica. And, and around 2008, the Gene Wiki project got funding to create Wikipedia articles for all human genes on the English Wikipedia. And what, what they did is, the, within the Gene Wiki project, is that um, items, uh, knowledge from variable, reputable uh, databases on genes were aggregated and uh, drafted into a Wikipedia stub. And a Wikipedia stub, um, Consist of uh, first info boxes. An info box is some sort of tabular, tabular construct in Wikipedia where you can uh, in, in, uh, store facts, and it aggregated these items, uh, these info boxes from uh, uh, life science databases. It, there were also um, uh, crowdsourced information about um, references, etc. Yes. So they took data from RefSeq or Uniprot and they and populated it, or PDB, and populated it. Yes. Who made that decision to do it with a bot? Like, was it a person who just decided to do it? or was No, this, it is, a, this was a project. It was a project, was a research project. supported By, through uh, some grant proposal yes. or something? Okay. Um, but they made, it, they made stops. So a stop means that it's minimal information, and the idea was to, um, or is, is to let the community then grow. So it, it, it fetches information from reputable databases, it uh, structured it into a Wikipedia article, and then the Wikipedia community took over and okay. started building bigger and bigger papers. But the idea was to create gene items for all human genes on Wikipedia. Okay. Um, maybe we'll talk about it later. How does it get updated? That's what my next question would be. That's the community and acts. Well, I did, it's not, it's, it, that was a big thing, but that's also why the project moved away from Wikipedia to Wikidata, but I'll get to that later. So, so, so but Wiki, the GeneWiki project only focused on the English Wikipedia, which was an issue because um, there are now more than 300 language communities in Wikipedia, so there are about 300 Wikipedias out there. And then trying to aggregate, trying to replicate that is, is, a, is a very, very big, big, big project at hand. And if we go, if we look at the, um, the different Wikipedias, uh, the, a funny remark here is that this slide is a slide that I've been using since 2015. And this, the numbers I just checked because I reuse these slides quite extensively. And I just recently checked if, I said maybe I should check the info boxes if the, if the numbers are still accurate. And actually, since 2015, the numbers they, they didn't really change. So for example, if you go to the Wikipedia article on malaria, you will see that the English Wikipedia mentions five categories from the ICD-9 or ICD-10. But in the Greek and the Dutch Wikipedia, there is only one, one item, one, one class for, uh, one identifier from the ICD-10. So basically, if you speak English, you get more knowledge than if you speak Dutch or Greek alone. And the same goes for the numbers. If we go to the Wikipedia page for, the, for a little island in the Caribbean called Aruba, you will get different population numbers uh, depending on the language edition you're reading. And any idea why that is? I mean, are we talking about errors here? I think it is because those are uh, created through 
Yeah, but the, 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 if you look at 103,000 and then 107,000, is there a reason why they, uh, the numbers differ? So the point I want to make here is that it's not necessarily bad information. It's just different resources. So different statistical organizations might use different, different measurements on how to cal calculate population size. They might have different points in time. Uh, and so there, there are a myriad of reasons why across different language versions there can be different facts on there. And then if a new fact is uh, put on, an, on one Wikipedia, it takes time, if at all possible, to disseminate across all the different language Wikipedias. So in 2012, Wikidata was uh, initiated initially to solve this. So instead of having all those info boxes and all that information uh, stored, um, we, the, the, the Wikipedia should source from the different, uh, from, the, from Wikidata, from a single source. And then if you want the population of Aruba, you go to Wikidata, you'll see the, the information about the population size and then you populate the info boxes. And this never really materialized in the big Wikipedias, but it did in the smaller language populations, where Wikipedia articles are being populated from Wikidata. But the English, the German, the French, and the Dutch Wikipedia, there is some resistance of using uh, of Wikidata to pop automatically populate uh, Wikipedia articles. Um, but what happened is that the community, the global community, started using Wikidata as they're using Wikipedia. So the Gene Wiki project was one example. So uh, Wikidata is to data as Wikipedia is to text. So the same mechanisms work. Um, it is completely free. Anybody can contribute. It covers all domains of knowledge. So if you want to uh, watch knowledge from a soap opera, you can go to Wikipedia and you can go to Wikidata Biology art history, history, you name it. Um, but what is new, it integrates with the semantic web. So it becomes a hub, which is an interesting feature, in my opinion, from, from Wikidata. It allows navigating the semantic web without having to really fully understand, at first, what, what comes with RDF, uh, what comes with Sparkle, etc. So it, it is an easy entry point into, into the semantic web. It has a high-performance Sparkle engine, and also not, uh, not unimportant is it's stable. So where research projects tend to end when the grant ends, uh, and Wikidata is independent of that, so knowledge can live on for once grant projects, um, uh, re uh, one projects resurface, they can continue where things were left off. It's funded uh, uh, like Wikipedia. There, is a, there are lots of none. So it's, it has the same, same constraints as any funded project, but the community is bigger. So, and, uh, and, and uh, there is an active community. There is uh, active funding cycles for all of the wikis. So there's lesser risk of dis uh, disappearance. I mean, I'm not saying there is no risk. It is lesser risk than, 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 uh, than any, any research project that tends to lift four to eight years. Yeah. And although I don't know if it's separate from Wikidata, I think the campaigns are, are just across all the wikis. So they have the banners, but I actually don't know about if there, if there are parallel flows or if there is, uh, or if it's just going from one funding cycle. There is also the Wikipedia movement is also scattered across the world with chapters and, and, organize, and country affiliates. So you have Wikimedia Deutschland, Wikimedia Brazil, and they are independent organizations which are affiliated with the Wikimedia, and they have their independent funding cycles. Uh, but those are more for community engagement and less for the infrastructure. 
So quickly, um, if you're going to any Wikipedia article, I'm t I, t I took one from, an, from a protein in here. To the left, there you'll see the inf you see a link which is called a Wikidata item. So you can go from any Wikipedia item to the to the respective Wikidata item. This is this is a design feature. Uh, there is always one link between a Wikipedia article and a Wikipedia item. You cannot have. Uh, and uh, multiple Wikidata items to a single Wikipedia, uh, to a single Wikidata item. And there is some discussion on this because you will run, as, as, especially when you talk about the multilinguality, some aspect can in one language have one Wikipedia article while it have multiple in, in, in another language. But that's, that's still being discussed and debated. But currently it's one Wikidata, one Wikipedia article leads to one Wikidata item. And this is the uh, this is the, the atomical structure of a. Um, anyone here familiar with RDF? Does it need explanation? So you can see that the Wikidata item itself. So we, I said it aligned with 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 RDF or with the semantic web. That's not completely true because when we talk about wiki, well, talk about Wikidata on an architecture level, it has two redundant systems. So you have the native Wikidata, wiki Wikibase, which is Wikibase, the native system that uh, actually has the following structure. It uh, has a header, and the header, the header um, contains all the language links. So you have the, the label, you have a set of aliases, which are, uh, uh, and you have a description. The description is a bit different than what the, the name description suggests. It's not a definition of retinoic acid. It's just something to, to get a basic understanding. Because within Wikidata, the combination of the label and the, de and the description define the uniqueness of the item. So you cannot have two Wikidata items with the same label and the same description. And then moving forward to the footer, these are the site links. So for the retinoic acid receptor alpha, there are seven entries which is in the site links. If you go to the to an uh, Wikidata item, there will be other site links to other wiki projects such as wiki commons, which I shortly will discuss. Um, on, uh, but here you, you can point from the Wikidata item to all the Wikipedias uh, that address, have a Wikipedia article on that item. If you go to, the, to any Wikipedia article, you will see the language links. These language links are being fed by these site items. And then we are going to the statements, which is the, which is the body of a Wikidata item. So for those of you familiar with RDF, um, we have the structure, uh, we see the structure of the subject, predicate, and object. Um, but, uh, uh, the unit in Wikidata also consists of qualifiers and references. This is important because Wikidata is not a primary source. Uh, I'm even going so far saying that if, Wikidata item, if a Wikidata item doesn't have a reference, I don't take it serious. And the reason is, um, like I think Nico, you just asked this, who is adding it? I mean, you can, and, and I need to check again, but a year ago, uh, according to Wikidata, the earth was flat because there is, there is a source that says, coming from the Flat Earth Society, that the earth is flat. So that statement can live in Wikidata. And then you want to have, I, I know, but I was a bit unhappy with that because it is, you could argue that it's a, it's a source. And by using the references and the qualifiers, you're allowed to use, the, it's perfectly fine within Wikidata to have disagreement between items. And then you can use the references and the qualifiers to distinguish between those, between those. So we have the subject, the predicate, and the object. This is, for example, a better example than the flat earth, because yeah, we can argue that it, it, it is, whether it's valuable to deprecate it or not. But if we go to uh, places on earth that, um, like well, if you go to the page to, of um, uh, Catalonia, you will see that, it's, uh, that there is disagreement whether it's part of it's a country or whether it's part of a country. And so you have many disputable areas uh, in the world, uh, and there are and you can you can capture that in Wikidata by capturing the disagreement using the references and the qualifier. So you could, for example, say. Uh, 
X is part of Y, disagreed by according to government A, and then disagreed by government B. And that's where you use the qualifiers and the references to capture the provenance of the, the item. So this is stored in the, made in the wiki base item as a JSON object. There is no URIs in, there are no URIs in here, but there is also a parallel but every time there is an edit in wiki data, it's being updated here, but it's also being updated in the RDF, which is stored in a separate uh, RDF endpoint, which I will discuss shortly. If that's being used, yes, but not if it, there is no info box that is using that, that's not the, then, then no. So it needs to be there. There are examples where, where, where that happens. But, the, but that needs to be, so you cannot push it from Wikidata. It needs to be fetched from a Wikipedia author that, that, that fetches that from Wikidata. I would say almost all Wikipedia articles, except um, those that are newly created. So there is, a, there is a lag between new Wikipedia articles, and also if there is no, uh, there, is all, there are more numbers, but I don't know the exact numbers, if there is only one edition of the item. So if there is like one Wikipedia article that's only in language X, I, I, I haven't checked it recently, but I don't expect that in English, because I think for the English Wikipedia, there is always a Wikidata item. Yeah, it's not really for most older articles that have been received, but have created new data Yeah. So there are in many places, uh, for some types, for example, uh, a blog post connects empty Wikidata pages to the ontology and the base ontology and stuff, so that's not quite tricky, because there's just some bad So there, there, it follows actually three, three. Uh, there, there is the notability, the notability con uh, requirement in Wikidata. It follows three things. One is uh, 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 something can be can have a Wikidata item if it is uh, if it exists on any of the wikis, which is Wikipedia, Wikicommons, Wikisource. If it exists there, you can have a Wikipedia a Wikidata item. The second item is uh, you can have a Wikidata item if, the, if it has uh, reputable resources, uh, references, so sources you can reference. So in that case, there are more Wikidata, there are more Wikidata items without a Wikipedia article than, than the other way around. And then the third item is you can add something on Wikidata if it, f uh, if it fits some, struct some uh, structural need. Um, for example, if you need uh, a family tree and uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, family members of yours don't follow the, uh, the required constraints, the notability constraints, you can still make a Wikidata item because it's it, it, it feeds a, a, a use case, basically your family tree. So those are the three things. So the Wikidata, the wiki, so as I said, the, the, the um, Wikibase is an extension to MediaWiki. MediaWiki feeds the feeds the wiki, feeds Wikipedia. Wikibase is an extension, and this information is stored as a JSON blob within a relational database within Wikibase. And it also has the same um, d discussion and revision that is that is uh, used in Wikipedia. So you can go back and forth between edits. So if you're going to Wikidata and you see something uh, that is pure vandalism, you can roll back or can revert what has been added. But you can also go to the discussion page and discuss something like you do on a Wikipedia article. So at every single item, uh, you can have a discussion on, on, uh, on Wikidata. Then 
Wikidata has uh, a set of prefixes. So there is the um, Q item, the QID, which is the value, which is an item. Um, that's a number that starts with a Q. There, is, there are the lexemes, uh, which I briefly will mention. Uh, no, I think I should mention it here. Let me check. No. I will open it. So the Lexeme is, an, is a really active community on Wikidata I'm not really familiar with. I haven't used it at scale. I played a bit with it. But this is li lingu lingu um, linguistic, um, a linguistic chapter in Wikidata. I think I need to step, in he uh, step out here unless Tiago or Charlie has something to say about it. I think it's really, really interesting to, to explore, but it has been on my to-do list for two years now since it came into existence. It basically allows... Yeah, I think it has some value when you, talk, when you go into multilingual ontologies. But again, this is just this is something we need to discuss in, over beer and cocktails. And I'm I'm not I'm thinking it's a really really interesting project which probably has value, but it's out of my comfort zone. So I'm mentioning it here, uh, and it uses a bit of a different structure than than Wikidata itself. So it, for here example, we have curation that says combines like seems cure and Asia uh, and Asian. So I, I, um, don't quote me on this, but I think a lexeme is defined as a token that is being used in communication without any semantics. So if, if there is a word that has different meaning in a different language, it will have a single lexeme item and then it will have pointers to, the, to, 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 those, to those terms. Then the properties are items themselves, but only serve as predicates within the Wikidata model. And a new feature to Wikidata are the entity schemes, which are shape expressions being uh, stored as an extension in Wikidata as well. And here you'll see the, um, the this, is, this is what I mentioned to, to you, Nico, earlier, that if you want to put in an ontology, uh, these are the items that are expected according to the people who made this item. Again, uh, this entity schema extension uses the Wikidata slash Wikipedia infrastructure, so we can, one can have discussions. It is a wiki, so one can go in and add it and say, I, I want to add some other property in here. It's still very rudimentary, and uh, there is a lot to say about the user interface, but judging from the GitHub issues, or the fabricator as it's called, there's a lot of development in this on the Wikidata side, so I'm expecting more user-friendly inter user interactions or features shortly in here. And I mentioned this was the Wikidata model uh, previously, but moving back, this is the RDF model that sits in a separate, separate endpoint. If you go to the Wikidata um, query service, this is a Sparkle endpoint, and we can select as there is, if you, this is by the way also a very interesting resource if you want to teach if you're teaching Sparkle or you want to learn Sparkle, because they have a ton of examples that, are, that can be used to learn, to learn writing. So if we're interested in cat with pictures, uh, and we'll get uh, this, this picture. But I wanted to show is this little icon here. And this little icon indicates how, how up to date the endpoint is with respect to Wikidata. So it's impressive that uh, Wikidata actually, I mean, as a, as a user, you have the impression it's a single system. But in fact, you're, when, you, when you talk to Wikidata, um, and you, you're, you're browsing here, you're seeing you're actually touching on a different underlying database than when you're using the Sparkler endpoint. And, um, this is the RDF uh, iteration or uh, rendering of that model. So we have a item, and then uh, we have the, the arc 
Wikipedia, wiki URL, which is a Wikipedia article, schema about uh, the Wikidata item. And then there is the whole, this is the whole section. So we start out by pointing to a blank note. So if we have uh, Q1234, we have a Wikidata statement with a blank note. And, uh, and, and then we have the, the arc prof was derived from, which points to the references. And we point to the value, and which is, we point to the statement value, which is, so you have the item, you have the property, and the, 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 there is, there is an, again, a redundancy in Wikidata, which is the P prefix. I'm, I'm going a bit deep in here, but let's discuss that in more detail. But if you're really interested in the references and the qualifiers, you need to use the P prefix to query, query Wikidata. If you're only interested in the subject predicate objects, you can use a WDT, uh, WDT predicate uh, to query, query Wikidata. However, if you're using a WDT prefix in Wikidata in your querying, you're losing, you don't have access to the provenance of, of that statement. So here I have a little example of um, questions. It's more, an, uh, it's also a, slide, a set of slide decks I used uh, previously to show that uh, by, use, by leveraging Wikidata, you can actually query. This is more a uh, shout out to Sparkle than, than to the, but if you want to get the same information from the original resources, you have to uh, understand all the APIs that the systems go with. So I want to have retrieved genes with the GWS association with asthma. I get 39 genes. And basically, it's this Spark query that says the gene uh, has a genetic association to asthma. It's a subclass of gene, and I get 39 genes. So let's count. This is You can replicate this in a traditional bioinformatic database, and you have one API call. You need to understand that API call. Now I want to have, uh, the gene should be localized to the membrane. I add three lines to my Sparkle query, and I end up with two tunes. Let's assume that the membranes are a second database. You have to learn a second API. Um, now I want to have some provenance, another third API, single line in Sparkle. Now I want to use the disease ontology structure or any ontology structure. And so I don't, I'm not interested in asthma. Uh, I need to, the respiratory disease. I have a fourth, et cetera. I have opportunistic integration. And now I want to have associated pathways. I'm showing that a pathway can have multiple information that is not in wiki data. But uh, with wiki pathways that has that information used as a Spark endpoint. And now I can run a federated query, which is these are the arcs that are being stored, that are being extracted from Wikidata. There is a link uh, and the pathway ERI, where is it? Here. So we link this block with that block. And the Sparkle endpoint takes, takes care of uh, querying that with a single language instead of having to learn the set of APIs. You can also go the other way around. This is the Sparkle endpoint from Uniprot. I can actually use a federated query where I select uh, information from Uniprot and then I request information from Wikidata so I can actually sort of seamlessly integrate between different endpoints uh, in here using Wikidata as the connecting hub. You have a question? Yeah, I will. Yes, you can do that. And one thing, and that's the difference, um, and Wikidata only allows federation over public endpoints. But uh, you, can, you can, this is the, uh, where is the endpoint? Did I, it is, it is, if you want to use it in, in the, the endpoint, this is the surface endpoint for, uh, for Wikidata, you know, I should go in here. Surface is uh, 
and then you, should, you can basically do any federated query from there. The other way around depends on the license that is being, well, actually, that's a good question for the OBO endpoint. That's a thing to access to see if, it, if it's supported by the Wikidata list of federated endpoints. So a bit, a bit of wrap up. So we have uh, the Wikimedia infrastructure. I only focus here on three things, but it's, it's a lot bigger. So you have Wikipedia, you have Wikisources, uh, the uh, Wiki taxonomy, um, but we're focusing only on, the in, on Wikidata for data, which, which builds on the Wikibase infrastructure. I just realized that this picture is actually a bit inaccurate because the Wikibase is an extension to MediaWiki. So underneath Wikibase, there is MediaWiki. So um, Wikidata feeds on Wikibase, and which is for data. By the way, you can install your own Wikidata, Wikibase, even using the Wikidata properties or your own, to, to store your own triples uh, outside the Wikidata ecosystem. MediaWiki is for um, text, and then we have the entity schema extension in there. Anyone here familiar with Shacks? So there are three. Uh, okay. Um, should we dive in? Because for the sake of time, we only have 45 minutes, and I'm. Uh, and okay, so no schemas. Then I will skip this. I will share the slides later. I will briefly mention that what we want to do is so what you can do is this, this feature a bit in what Nico just asked is how do you know what is in, in Wikidata? Well, you can go to any of our pages and you can venture out to the links, but then you easily miss links that are not connected from that person. So that's where the, end, where the schemas or the entity schemas come in. Uh, again, it's not a constraint language. That's, uh, so you can have, like with Wikidata, you can have, you can have multiple shape expressions on Wikidata uh, that, are not, uh, that are on the same type and that might disagree. It's just a few by someone who wants to talk about, who wants to talk about entity schemas. Um, and if you want to dive into shape expressions, this is a paper we wrote about which uh, um, aligning resources on human coronaviruses that uses the entity schema and there is this validating RDF data book that's online and uh, that, ex that goes into shacks and shackle and the differences and the uh. Okay, questions about Wikidata. Okay, then we'll con So, uh, from, from this bio-curation community, what, what do you, like, how do you expect this community to contribute to Wikidata? Like, create, edit pages, of course, makes sense. If you see a gene page that we can edit, we will go ahead and edit it. But other than that, uh, several of us also build resources and so on. Do you see any 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 recommendations? I guess that's what I'm I'm looking for. Actually, Things. yes, not not as in contribution. I would actually say more first first usage, and by using contributing, because you don't want to replicate uh, you don't want to replicate all your efforts into Wikidata. But why would you? It is uh, it, it, you already have your resource. So the question more becomes, what is the value of Wikidata to you as a curator? And then once that is feasible, I expect you will start contributing towards wiki, to Wikidata. I mean, one use case, and I, I have a slide on that later. So I was part of the GeneWiki project until the project ended in 2020. And one of our use cases was the disease ontology. And what we did, we had this feedback loop where the, wiki, the disease ontology was put onto Wikidata and was regularly updated. And the Wikipedia and the Wikidata community uh, en enriched that. So you have disagreements, you have discussions, you had all those things, and that was fed back to the uh, curator, the, the curator team, and was acted upon. So there, there is one thing: is uh, someone edited uh, edited the item incorrectly. So the next bot run was just uh, it was just re was corrected. The other thing is. We had one eureka moment when someone from Vietnam came in from the Vietnamese Wikipedia and said, like, uh, 
and uh, yeah, I see where you're coming from, but this disease actually has two subclasses, should be two distinct classes. And then the curation team looked at that and said, yeah, actually that's true. So the next edition of the disease ontology had that separation of those two items. And the best eureka moment for the disease ontology team was when we, we, we ran our first bot. So what we usually do, and I will briefly address that a bit, is when, whenever I write a bot, I first select one to five items and manually what we've done with your item page, I manually make it which is according to what I think is complete. Once I have that, I make my shape expression and I start making my bot to replicate that. So I have a bot, take the original item from the source, put it on Wikidata and let it rest for two to three weeks, see how the community interact. Then I will do 10, then I will do 100, and then I will do 1,000. And depending on the, the feedback from the community, I'll go full throttle and put, move it to production. So it will, it will, it will be in a uh, GitHub action-like structure, which regularly uh, aligns those, those two things. And the first time we did it was really exciting because we, I, I, I think I started the bot at 12, and I woke up the next morning, which is always a bit, it's always a bit scary because you have to go like, okay, what happened? What is, because we did it as global, so everybody interacts from different time zones. And the, the biggest achievement was that suddenly the disease ontology had, I think it's now in the range of, last time I checked was two years ago, it was 17 uh, translate, uh, translations for, on average for each disease term. But when, the, when we did it first, it was 7.5. So what you really get back from the wiki data at first, so the, re, the cherry picking thing is these translations of ontology terms or, or, or for, curation of genes has been going on for 60 years at the biocuration level, uh, but the biomolecules such as glycans it is not represented much at all at Wikidata. So I was wondering, uh, is there any, so for me, I would want to go see what is there first, and when I don't see it, what are the options? I mean, I can edit a page. Is that what you think we should do? Or creating yeah. pages in Wikidata, you know, what are the balances that we should consider instead of just... It, it is really about usage value. I mean, it, it's a public road. So what do you want to put on the public that people can use and the, the, the effort you want to put in? Because one of the biggest challenges is to find out what's already there, uh, how to align it. And, and, and that can be beneficial as well because then you get, you, you'll get information back um, So, if we go back to the bio-creation page uh, on Scolia, you, we, we saw that uh, some have images. And that is another link that is within, that is uh, a link which is kind of interesting because when we talk about federation within the wiki world, there is a lot of confusion. So when I talk about federation, I talk about federation in the sparkle sense. When you talk with Wikipedians, Wikidatians about federation, it is the interaction between the wikis. So um, from commons to Wikipedia to Wikidata. And this is an ongoing discussion for people try, because both, both definitions exist in the Wikidata world. So we're now diving into the federation between the, the, the wiki commons and, um, and Scolia. So I'm, I took here the page of Tiago, who's in the audience, and as you will see, uh, there is Tiago has, uh, there is an image of Tiago on Wikidata. Once you have this statement on, on the page that represents you, um, the, the image will show up in Scolia uh, there. So how did Tiago, well, I think it's Tiago, yeah, Tiago uh, edited that. How did he enable that? Tiago uploaded a photo. Did you upload this? No, it was uploaded to the Ah, okay. So again, in line with what Charlie just said, is before uploading an image of yourself, check with comments if there isn't already a picture of you on Wikimedia Commons. And I recently learned that if, you have, if you're arrested in the US, and you have a public image, and there are Wikipedians who are now uploading those mock shots to, to comments and use that as, a, as an incentive for you to get a better image uploaded. But, <laughs> but speaking of this, like, uh, what exactly is, you know, what is your way to control the bit of stuff that's going on on your page? So let's say you're just, you're a relatively private person, you don't want to follow can you somehow say, I am that person and I do not want this and 
Yeah. I, I haven't been there, but I, that mechanism exists. I think there is even a link there which has, uh, when you upload an image or you see an image, this is an image of a person. If you don't, uh, if you don't agree, please contact and, and it will be removed. So if you want to upload, I, I will share the link uh, in Slack. That's true. But there is there is a point, good point there. There is you need to own the copyright before you upload the images. So it is possible to upload professional professional images, but you need to have an explicit permission by the photographer to release it. Well, actually, it's more ideal if the professional photographer releases the image, him or herself. Uh, but you can also, there is a system, and I forgot the name now, there is a system where you can, where you can uh, present the image and present the written permission from, uh, from the photographer to put in there. But that, that's correct. You need to own the copyright to, your, to that picture for it to use, uh, even if it's a picture of yourself. But then again, if the professional photographer uploads your, if a photographer, professional photographer uploads a picture of you, you have the right to request deletion of that image from Commons. So for the sake of time, um, I want to pause here a bit because we can do this also, I think, um, at a later stage. Do you want to have the full program so we move or should I? I think we have to get out of this room in, in, in 30 minutes. Um, I actually now wanted to go into, to, um, to go into licensing, but I actually had a plan here to go outside as a break. But now I'm having second thoughts of whether we want to do that or not. So what are your thoughts? I mean, do we want to continue until 12 o'clock? So then we, we have to, I can go into the break now. So we just wrap up now and then we uh, meet again uh, in the central hall. Or we can, also, we can also call it a break and then I was told that we can have uh, another room at 12 o'clock. So it's up to you. Okay, so then, okay, then I will briefly, then I will table this for now and we can, we can later uh, continue on, on uploading pictures because what I really wanted to address as well is the licensing of, of Wikidata and Wikipedia because that's really, really important and the main topic, which I'm afraid we'll not address today, is uploading or aligning oboe ontologies to, to Wikidata and here the same issue, the same issue with respect to licenses will arise. So what Tiago just mentioned is with, with respect to the images, you need to own the copyright and you need to have the license to reuse that image on, on, on Commons slash Wikidata. So Wikidata uses a uh, CC0 public domain license. All, uh, all structured data from the main property like theme and entity schema names is available on a Creative Commons license. Text and the other namespaces is available on a Creative Commons attribution share alike license. Uh, um, uh, so what does it mean? So, it, so usually people say Wikidata is CC0. That's not completely accurate. It's accurate for, the, for all the namespaces that I've mentioned, the PQ, uh, PQ the E and the L uh, namespaces. That data is, you can use, it's public, it's public data. 
But there is another thing, and I thought I had a, oh yes, here, license stacking. So the reason why, um, there is an issue that arises when using open data and, or, or any data at all, which is license stacking. So when we're trying to reuse information from different resources, um, you, need to you need to apply all the licenses that align, that apply. So if you're combining CC0 data with CC BY or CC BY SA, it basically means that you have to uh, release that aggregated data on the most restrictive license in it. But that, that depends, so that, these are, that depends a bit in, that, that creates some issues in reuse. So we have here the CC0 and the public domain, which means that it's just public. You don't, you can use it how you like it, commercially, non-commercially. You don't have to attribute the data. You can even, uh, other, it's, uh, although it's ethical questionable, you can even put your name to the data uh, and, and legally. And I, I, my, I release anything on Wikidata or in Commons with using CC0 data, but I still, but you still see that people sometimes attribute it. But that's CC0, so you can do it with public data. Anything on Wikidata is CC0. So the next line is CC BY, which is CC0 plus attribution. So you need to say I'm taking this, I'm using this information from X, Y, Z. Then the next one in line is CC BY SA, which means that it's uh, attribution, but if you're reusing it, you have to use the CC BY SA. Uh, um, uh, you have to use the same license. So it's, it's, this, this, is, um, this is a bit of inheritance. Uh, the next one is the CC BY NC, which is uh, attribution, and the data can only be reused for non-commercial purposes. Then we have the CC BY ND, which is non-derivative, which means the data may not be used in any other context. It should be used as is. And then we have combinations. So we have CC BY, non-commercial, share alike, and we have CC BY, non-commercial, ND. Now, when you start aggregating different databases, uh, and, and I see this happens a lot in OBO ontologies, and I recently uh, saw FIDEO, uh, and which is released as a CC0 license, but it inherits uh, Foodon, which is CC BY. And that, that's, again, I'm not a lawyer, so what I'm saying here is common sense, and I've been asked, tried for years to understand the part of it, and the only answer I got is the only answer you can get is through litigation. But my common sense, I'm not a lawyer, so don't, don't say Andra said so, but my understanding is that it's a creative license. So as long as it's a, I am citing Nature publications. Nature is not, an, is not an open publication form. Still, I'm allowed to do that, and nobody will, nobody will challenge me because citation in the academic world is the currency. But, uh, so I'm using the same analogy. When I am citing an, an, an ontology term in oboe, I can, I can make an item in Wikidata on any oboe term, as long as I'm not using the ontological relationships. And I'm, I'm hoping to get some pushback from the oboe community here, because I, I simply don't know if it, this is accurate. So I can take any oboe term, put it into Wikidata, put in the item in there saying it's going from oboe, and I'll be fine where I'll be in trouble if I'm, use, if I'm not using a CC0 lic uh, licensed ontology, if I'm pointing to a non-CC0 licensed ontology and I start importing ontological relationships to Wikidata, which is a class of uh, instance of uh, those, those things. So what I'm doing with any ontology, if it's a CC0 ontology in Oboe, I'm just importing it as is. So I'm trying to replicate the same ontological structure in Oboe into Wikidata. If it's not on CC0, ontology and I need, I'm not, I will not write a bot to do the full ontology, but whenever I need an ontology term, I will mint that in Wikidata and I will make a SCOS exact match uh, to the ontology term. I will not use subclass information and I will not use any. It is, used, it is typically the ontology ID, the ontology data, the URI, 
and I, I'm saying the instance of P31 uh, ontological term. And this is something I was hoping to have a discussion here today, maybe we can do it in the margin, but this is something that is, that is complicating it a lot. And I'm wondering how that's being dealt with in Oboe, because I saw the same thing. Let's take the example of FIDEO, where you have CC BY and CC0 at the same time. So FIDEO is released to CC0, but it contains items from another ontology, which is CC BY. So should I, can I then assume that everything has been whitewashed into CC0, or is, is the FIDEO ontology just in disagreement uh, with, with, with the license? So uh, this is then the license stacking. So here you have the schema, and the same applies in Wikidata. So Wikidata is CC0, Wikipedia is CC by SA. Um, okay, so now we're going for the break, and then we're going to off, we're going to continue afterwards. But what I want to do is I want to play a bit with the licensing, uh, with, with, with reusing, using different licenses. So I'm a big fan of iNaturalist. And iNaturalist is an, uh, is an app. Do I have it here? iNaturalist is an app that comes with a community and it basically works as follow. Um, you make a picture while you're out in nature uh, and you release it on iNaturalist. And iNaturalist is shared with GBIF. GBIF is a global biodiversity information framework and we then, in the wiki project, wiki project uh, um, biodiversity, use the observations in iNaturalist in Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikipedia. When you set up, and this is, that this is something that I hope to, 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 to use, to show that when you, when you start an iNaturalist account, you start with a CC BY NC license which basically means we cannot reuse your uh, content uh, for, uh, for in any of the wikis. So what I want to ask you is to install the app on your phone and join. I will later show you how you can join the, the project. I've created a biocuration uh, project page. And let's have a break, walk outside, and just make a... So what you, do, what you do with iNatural is you make a picture of anything wild. So no humans, no dog on a leash, no cat on a leash, uh, no bird in a cage, no plant in a pot. It should be wild. Any, any weed outside, any bird, anything that's, that you just see. Make the observations and what will happen is the iNaturalist community will start curating your observations. To tell you what species it is, there will be discussions. Uh, about what we see, and uh, and in the end of the day, you have you know what you see. And then shall we reconfine at noon in the central hall? And as a bit of a teaser to get you back, so we'll do go of the demo reuse and then we'll really dive into aligning what the steps that are involved in getting content onto Wikidata. Okay, thank you.